In this video, I've got seven home theater hacks that are cheap and easy to help you maximize your home theater experience. Let's discuss. Before we get started, I'm inching closer to 1,000 subscribers and I wanna say that I appreciate everyone's support. So if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm can help others find this video. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and if you don't wanna miss any future videos as soon as they're uploaded, hit that bell notification. Also, if you wanna help the channel grow financially, there is a generic Amazon affiliate link in the description of every video that I post. Doesn't matter what you buy, if you use my affiliate link, I do get a small commission and that really, really helps the channel. And don't forget, Prime Day is July 12th and the 13th. So if you buy anything on Amazon, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate link. If you're an avid home theater enthusiast, then you already know the importance of acoustic panels and the role it plays in your room. But they can get very expensive. However, DIY acoustic panels can be very affordable and effective. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to DIY acoustic panels. I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I used. I built two 24 by 48 acoustic panels in my theater and they were great. And it didn't cost me that much. So if you're on a budget and are in need of a cheap but effective solution for acoustical soundproofing, try DIY solution. DIY smart homes are all the rage now. Companies have made it convenient and affordable to build a smart home. No matter what ecosystem you've invested in, whether it be Google Home, Amazon Alexa, or HomeKit, you can build a seamless smart lighting system for your theater. And with DIY home automation servers like HomeBridge, you can bridge the gap between smart home products and different ecosystems that wouldn't normally work in tandem with each other. For instance, if you have a Plex server and a HomeKit ecosystem, you can automate your lights to turn on or off, dim or brighten when a movie is started, paused, resumed, or stopped. I have a complete tutorial three-part walkthrough on my channel so check out those videos if you want to bring your home theater lighting to end game status. Smart lights and smart switches also makes it super convenient because you can control your lights quickly and efficiently either with an app or with voice automated speakers. This next tip goes right along with light control. Painting your walls black can make a massive improvement for your picture quality especially if you're rocking a projector and a screen. Just like sound emanating from your speakers bounces off your walls creating reflection points, light from your TV or projector bounces off white walls and back onto your screen. And the last thing that you want is ambient light washing out your image. But if you paint your walls, preferably a matte black or gray, then you drastically reduce ambient light that reflects back onto your walls. Sticking with the light theme here, blackout curtains can give you that last push to get over that hump and completely light control your room. And if you combine painting your walls black and adding blackout curtains, you'll never have to worry about light bleed from windows or ambient light reflecting back onto your screen. I did both of these things in my theater and it really helps draw you into what you're watching on screen. More and more companies are developing their room correction software to include multiple profiles when running your calibration. And this is great because it means that you can easily switch back and forth between a two channel setup or a complete Dolby Atmos configuration. Or maybe you have multiple rows with stadium seating and you want a specific profile just for the main listening position. And then you want another profile when you're watching content with friends and family filling up all those seats. Having multiple profiles gives you a lot of flexibility and allows you to switch between them super quick. With my Anthem MRX 720 receiver, I can save multiple different profiles. 
I can save each of those profiles on my computer. And since the software works over the network, it only takes me a few clicks to upload my profile of choice to my receiver, and then I'm done. Hey, what's up? You've made it this far in the video, so welcome to the channel and thank you for watching. If this is your first time visiting the channel and you're enjoying the content that I produce here, why don't you go ahead and do me a solid, hit the subscribe button, let your friends know about the channel, and hit the bell notification so you know when I post new content. And if you're enjoying this video, why don't you go ahead and hit the like button. It'll help the channel grow and I would greatly appreciate it. All right, well, I guess that's it. I'll let you get back to the video. A speaker that is fully towed in is one that points directly at the listening position. Why would you want to tow in your speakers? Well, there are a number of reasons why you would want to tow in. There's speaker placement, location of the listening position, width of the listening area, the sound radiation pattern of your speakers, acoustics of your room, design guidelines of the speaker manufacturer, and personal preference. The location of the listening chair is equally as important as the speakers. Close proximity to the speakers approaches a near field listening arrangement. If you have a smart thermostat like Nest or Ecobee, you can add smart sensors to your ecosystem to help regulate and control the temperature depending on what room you're in. What does this have to do with home theater? If you have a projector, then you know projectors can give off a ton of heat. They can basically double as a space heater heating up your room. Adding additional sensors makes your AC system more efficient because your main thermostat might not be anywhere near your theater. Placing a sensor in my theater room, I can tell my Nest thermostat to only read the temperature in my theater for more accurate cooling. And I always had an issue before because my theater room would stay really warm because I only had one sensor, which is outside of the theater. And there was no way to accurately control the temperature in my theater because the thermostat was reading the temperature where the thermostat is located and not inside my theater. Adding an additional sensor solved all of that. So if you have a smart thermostat, check to see if yours supports additional smart sensors. I'll leave links in the description for both Nest and Ecobee. All right guys, that's gonna conclude it for my seven cheap and easy home theater hacks. So now it's time for query of the week. This week's query is, what are some cheap and easy home theater hacks that you've employed that you'd like to share with the audience? Let me know in the comments. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Don't forget to click on those affiliate links in the description and enjoy your home theater journey. For Hater at Cowboy Cinema, I'm Hater at Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.